Good afternoon, everybody, or late good evening in Korea and good morning in America. It's good to see everybody here quarantined. We are all quarantined. Whether we know it, whether we like it, whether we perceive it as bondage or freedom, we are in quarantine. The name for that is conditioned existence. We are bound to causes and conditions. And usually in the freedom or illusory freedom of everyday life, we forget about it because we do what we want. When I was much, much younger, I asked this question, what is freedom? And it always boiled down to one point. I do what I want. That's freedom with a child or for a child. Later on, we use this freedom so much that we start to follow the conditions that we create. And we become the consequence of our own actions and choices. And this time it's not different. Somebody, some people chose to trade wildlife on a market. Wildlife reacted. We all bear the consequences. So our job is really to see cause and effect as it truly is and use this quarantine situation to get rid of all our illusions, presuppositions, and ideas about this. That's something we can do. If we don't do it, we don't use the situation correctly. How do you know that? You are bored, you feel confined, you don't know what to do, you're stressed, and I don't mean relationship stress, I mean inside, you don't know what to do with the situation. Most of you, looking at me from the screens, you have families. So your family gives you a lot of jobs. More children, more jobs. If you live alone, different job. But no matter what, we created these conditions for ourselves and for each other. We have to live with these conditions much, much closer than we are used to, or sometimes we would want to. So the question is, in this limited physical space where we are most of the time, how do we create mind space? You cannot create mind space by telling people, leave me alone. You can't. Because they come up to you, especially if you are the adult in the room. You have to deal with them. Last time we spoke about approved silence and schedule. Now we take one more step. How do we help those people who we share the apartment with, we share our lives with, go on the path of awakening. Well, definitely not by preaching Buddhism or teaching them Zen, but actually getting down to business that you have never done before or not deep enough. This is the time to really go deep and clarify the relationship. Relationship with your spouse, with your children, Use the problem to ease the problem. Ask the question to get the right direction. Not necessarily the right answer, but the right direction. And the right direction starts with the right question. Sometimes you have to ask the other person who is talking to you, do you hear what you are saying? Do you really mean what you are saying? Is this you talking or your frustration talking? Is this you or your anger, your whatever karma you carry? talking to me. So we learn to distinguish between the creator and the created. We learn to perceive clearly as we are and as the relationship is. Why? This is one of those cases when we did not create the situation outside. It was imposed by the government and governments. This situation is something we have to follow. And now I remind you of uh, Sung San Sunim's poem. Very soft is true strength. With harmony comes luck. Follow situation, get happiness. Forbearance will make you a great person. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time. This is the time to have forbearance, endurance and stamina, because no matter how you look at it, this is a marathon. We are running a marathon here. This is no longer just one week, two weeks, three weeks. This, is, this has been over a month for most of us. And this quarantine situation is like I mentioned last time, is like a forced retreat. 
It's not something we want, it's something we have to do. And one line higher, follow situation, get happiness. So if you just encourage your family members to follow the situation and not make anything on top of it, you can get some basic happiness that nobody bothers another. And the first line, very soft is true strength. This is the time to really attain that. Because if you really go hard on someone, it bounces back. It bounces between the walls of your apartment all the time. They remember for days how you talk to them. The relationship is now short-circuited. You are together. You're confined. That's when this soft strength is wonderful. It has to be strength. It cannot become this mush of wrong compromises. But as we run a marathon, the strength, the stamina, the endurance is necessary and indispensable. So how do you keep this endurance mind, the forbearing mind? That's what we call strong center. So moment to moment, return to your Tantian. Moment to moment, put it down completely, whatever you think, whatever people tell you, whatever you feel or others make you feel. So thinking, speech, emotions, these little actions, completely put them down. So when we say be present and be together, this has meaning. This now has much deeper meaning than otherwise. And if you have conflicts, because I'm pretty sure you have experienced a lot of conflicts, where do they come from? So sometimes you have to say, honey, I need to think about this. Or sweetie, just a moment and daddy will answer you. And then take a moment to have some introspection and use the object-oriented question as you learned during the workshops and retreats and from the Dharma talks. What is this? Where does this come from? If I feel this conflict, what's my part in it? How can I remove my karma from the equation? How can I become pure, reflective, clear like space, clear like mirror mind? How can I do that? And the secret is that you can do this by not doing anything. By not making anything, not wanting anything, no checking, no holding, no attachment, no false identifications. The list is something you know. But the real question is how much can you fulfill the shopping list? What's in your actual basket? I.e. what's on your mind? Can you keep your mind clear moment to moment? That is the question. And if you can't, immediately there is a surface, a dualistic reaction, some self from which karma bounces off. Some reaction happens inadvertently, accidentally. Well, there are no accidents. There are moments when you are not aware. There are moments when we lose the moment and we are not aware of the situation. And these moments take revenge very, very quickly. The feedback loop is very short. So use this situation. Last time I mentioned, Sung San Sanim quoted, bad situation, good situation. How? How can that happen? Well, just like I've said before, use this to go deeper, use this to become more aware, more honest, no games, no roles, no wanting, no rejections, no attractions, just as it is. If there was any other solution than the mind that wakes up, we could follow that. But neither inside nor outside, there is no other solution than awakening itself. And that's why use your time, use your space to practice, whether you are on your own, or you find some private time in a family setting. Because with this, no one can just finish in the way we started. We change. We change during this time. And either you go up or you go down. But you cannot stay the same. This situation, this crisis leaves a mark on all of us. What kind of mark do you carry? What kind of change do you participate in? What is it that you finally identify with? That is the question. So now, I think this is plenty for intro. Does anybody have any questions? Please. 
Michal, hi. What is the difference between peaceful and complacency? Wonderful. Complacent is lazy and conceited together. So you think everything's okay, but it isn't. You would have to do something, but you don't. Complacent means you think different than reality. And you think higher of yourself than the environment would support or suggest. Peaceful is peaceful. That means really no problem. Ready to act, ready to help, and never fully satisfied with oneself. Adrian, what is your view on competition? How can one compete in a selfless way? Well, when you compete for quality and not against another person, with equal opportunity and fair share, that's correct competition. I seek to outdo my opponent or competitor, but I do not seek any detriment or let alone annihilation. And I share the result. Sometimes I share the result with the opponent whom I manage to supersede. If I become better than someone, my job is to share the result with the competitor and enable competition in a way that it could start again, that it wouldn't stop and it would yield the result. If you say, I win, that's selfish competition. You became better at something, okay? That's all that happened. Next time, someone else may do that. So share the result and again compete. So that means we share the results for all of us. That's competition for all of us. Without that, it doesn't work. Look at the jungle. So many plants and trees and creepers and palms and everything. Every one of them wants to get as close to the sky as possible and get as much sunlight as possible. So that's competition. But none of the plants kill each other. They try to dominate over one another, be stronger, taller than one another, absorb more sunlight by just growing up. But there is no chainsaw in any plant's non-existent hands. There is no explicit poison against another plant. Yeah, there are plants that repel animals in many ways. But a plant doesn't annihilate another plant. So we humans would have to learn how to do that, how to compete with each other, be better, and not to the detriment or to the annihilation of other humans at the same time. Flavius, competition plus sharing equals cooperation. Yes, but competitive cooperation. You know, until 1989, I lived in a, so in a socialist country. And uh, there was more cooperation than competition, and that cooperation was not so well founded. So the socialist economy collapsed. Nobody really believed in it. Everyone made the wrong compromise, and there was some quality production, but very little. There was not enough competition. And in this super capitalistic times of today, great companies with huge billions of dollars of turnover realized that internal competition is okay to a certain degree, but after a while, it makes them weak. Then another company can be better than them. So competition and cooperation in balance, that's good. That's very necessary. Hanan, I feel lately that I lost the spark in my practice. I continue to practice every day, but it feels a bit like routine. What can I do to get that spark, the fire and motivation back into my practice? Hanan, I have bad news for you. You have to open your television and turn on the suffering channel. And the suffering channel will teach you so much because if you don't do that, then this thing boils down and goes down until you suffer. So before you lose too much energy, before you lose even more motivation, get some motivation from the suffering of others. Eight billion more people. There's plenty to watch, okay? How do you suggest to increase the relation between people at this moment? Some people see each other like a potential source of infection, prefer distance. Thank you. Keep a distance. That's my suggestion. Just what you want. But cooperate enough that you would have enough to eat and you would help others get enough to eat. 
So let's take care of each other without the danger of infection. Are not high? What is the primary point and how is it connected nowadays to this corona time? Or not, primary point right now is not just a big hit with the stick. Primary point is your unmoving mind. Unmoving mind means no fear, no aggression, no greed, no rejection. This unmoving mind is fearless and whether you are infected or not, you remain unmoving. You know what to do. No one can rule out an accidental infection, no matter how much you are careful. But if your center is strong, you have no fear. And you are able to help and receive help, whichever is necessary. Some people have a hard time helping another person. Some others have an extremely hard time receiving and accepting help from one another. A long time ago in Korea, there was an entry ceremony for the retreat. It was very short, but people from foreign countries, they had to bow three times to the Buddha. And the Korean monks and the Western monks were there for breakfast in the Kunbang, in the great room. And then, as the entries were accepted previously by the office, people had to come in at the end of breakfast, and they had to bow to the Buddha, they had to bow to the Sangha, and then kneel, and then with hands in Hapchang, they say, my name is this and this, I come from this and this country, I would like to participate at the retreat, please help me and teach me. And this is very classic. To the present day, in Korea, if you want to enter a Zen room as a Sunim, and you are coming in as a guest, you are not based in that Zen room, you have to do pretty much the same, except you say, my name is this and this, my teacher is this and this, I come from this and this temple, the original temple where you got your hair cut, and please help me and teach me and allow me to participate at this retreat. So this is pretty standard. So we have some lay people coming from a Western country, and I intentionally do not say which one, because it could be from any one of these great individualistic Western countries. So I just call this the moon, okay? Three of them, three males, they come, and one of them was supposed to speak because we don't have all day, so one of them represented them. The bow happened to the Buddha and to the Sangha. They said what they said, the name, the country, and they would like to participate in the retreat. And they just didn't say, please help me and teach me. The head monk, just from the Western kind of side, tried to whisper, say, hey, you're supposed to say that. And the guy responded, I'm from the moon. We are not asking for any help. So, again, when you have an environment which helps you and teaches you, you have to accept that if you are in the position so don't worry about either way to give help or to receive help. Unmoving mind, clear mind, fearless mind, that's strong center now. Yael, in addition to Hanan, how to bring the motivation and spark to everything these days? Well, Yael, I think everything brings you the spark these days. Because if you really look at the way things are, the way human beings are, all of us are a walking basket of motivation. If other people's suffering is something that you can see, you can see the fact of suffering, the cause of suffering, and since you've been practicing for quite some time, you can also see the end of suffering. And you can help them walk on the path to end that suffering. All it takes is quietly and carefully joining their situation, if necessary, online, because we keep physical distance. And you let them ask their question. And your first initial question is, can I help you? And if they say, no, 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 I'm fine. Then you don't have to say anything. Then they are fine. But every single human being, every single relationship, every single phenomenon is motivation because we are all subject to impermanence, interdependence, and imperfection. These three things. And we are supremely exposed to cause and effect right now. Very vulnerable, every one of us. Tatiana, the question is about Tantian center. 
During a retreat, it is easier to focus on my tanti and center, but when I'm back to everyday life, it gets weaker. Also, my job requires a lot of thinking and talking to people, so I can't concentrate on that center continuously. Is it normal to have so-called ups and downs with the tanti and center, and how to keep it strong? Wonderful question, Tatiana. Very, very practical. And I should say that keeping your center strong requires two things. Pay attention to your breath and pay attention to your tantian. That's important. And the good news is that your breath is always with you, otherwise we would die within minutes. And your tantian is always with you because you are in your precious body. So it, all it takes is changing your habits, not to get carried away by your speech karma, thinking karma, feeling karma. And while you are talking, you keep this center strong by paying attention to that. That is the primary focus of attention. And at the same time, you can talk and think and feel and whatever sensory input and output happens. But the primary focus is always on the Tantian and you never lose your breath. All it takes is practice. We can do this. We call this acting non-action, way wu way, or the mind that acts without being broken or being in a dualistic state. So the acting non-action, the way wu way, means that you keep this unmoving mind this clear center, this moment, 100%, and at the same time, you are fully fluid, fully functional, manifesting everything, absorbing everything as necessary, but you're not moving from the moment. You're not broken into unnecessary dualistic reactions. And that's a lifesaver, not just now, in any kind of situation, any time. You go high. According to Zen, there is karma accumulated by our deeds, like a bank account where you can get plus or minus for good or bad actions. Rather, or the word karma only refers to habits, patterns of feelings, thinking, behavior, both. You're looking at it first from the accumulation and then you refer to what is being accumulated. What's the difference? Identification. So the moment you press record on your screen, everything gets written on your own hard drive. If you don't press that, then what appears also disappears. So if you become attached to sensory perceptions like hearing, seeing, etc., and also the internal processes of your mind, thinking, feeling, speech, etc., then it becomes accumulated and part of yourself. And what the Buddha discovered and subsequently 80 generations confirmed that you can reverse this, that you can remove the identity tag from your karma and become free from it. So do not accumulate what is not necessary and what is necessary you should have. So what is it that you want to take with you? What is it that you want to have as a component as part of your soul, i.e., what kind of person would you like to be? Now, accumulate that. And if you don't want to be someone, then don't entertain those thoughts, those feelings, those actions, that kind of speech, which would make you into the person that you do not want to be. That's very important. And thus, we can keep an operational personality that is agreeable agreeable to you, acceptable for your environment, but don't always accept 100% approval. You won't have it. In fact, if you have 100% approval, something's wrong. About 10% of counter opinions, that's necessary. That's very healthy. In other traditions of Buddhism, there is a practice of metta meditation, cultivating love and kindness. Why doesn't Zen have this form of meditation? And what can we do to develop metta through Zen tradition? Look, Hanan, we have compassion meditation. If you go to this wonderful Zen center in Nestiona, you see this great love, great compassion. Deja de bi, okay? 
And I'm very happy to see the smile of Tamir Massa's Dharma Master in the top right of my screen. Because that's why it's there. Because we have that practice, we don't call it metta. But when you chant Kwan Sam Bosal, you become Kwan Sam Bosal if you chant it in the right way. So Zen doesn't really talk about how to extend that to the rest of the world, how to manifest it, because it comes by itself. Zen always takes care of the root, the primary point. How it happens inside that you can completely let go of all your selfish feelings and selfless compassion comes. And becoming one is the key. So we practice this one mind, which is no mind. And this no mind is the source of non-dualistic wisdom, selfless help, and 100% compassion to all beings. In fact, out of this oneness experience, nothing else can come. Only these three major things. If you don't have it, then don't try to grab the fruit. Go to the tree and cultivate the tree. Practice this one mind. Become one with the situation. Become one with the minds of those people around you. And when you do that, necessarily, naturally, compassion develops. You reflect what the other feels, but don't identify with it. You can even reflect what the other person thinks, but you don't identify with it. So 100% correct reflection and oneness, but no identification. Very important. Ran. A relative of mine died yesterday, Jijang Bosa, and I'd like to help them in the manner that is done by the temple. What can I do from home on my own? Well, Ran, you can uh, make an altar and uh, put uh, the person's name on the altar and chant Jijang Bosa. Jijang Bosa is the guide of the deceased. That will help the person who just left the body and may not understand what to do next find a way out of here. It's not a problem that we die. We all do. The problem is we don't know what to do afterwards. First of all, most of us are afraid of death. And once we are out of the body, we do not have a way to get rid of our own delusions. So when people memorize the Book of the Dead in any kind of language or in any kind of culture, what they forget is it's not their own experience. It's something they read. So how do you internalize that? How do you attain that? Because if you don't, that reading is gone when your brain shuts down. You cannot evoke your memory when you're dead because you don't have a brain. Everything from your subconscious manifests. And if people don't know what to do, they need help. They can get it from those who actually understand cause and effect a little better. And we change Jijang Bosa, then their guide appears. And this guide helps them get out of here. Because once we are dead, we have nothing to do on this earthly level. Yet, many people just linger, 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 linger around. Okay? It's not necessary. It's not good. It's detrimental. It's losing energy. So when we change Jijang Bosa, then they find their way. Next, hi all. I got panic attacks several times, so I was on sick leave two months long. Uh, then I got this quarantine situation. Now I work again, but I know also I can feel that my boss wants me to resign and take steps in order to reach this. While being away, she was searching for my mistakes and now she brought them against me. I could escalate this situation, but I'd like to find a better solution and not to fight with my boss and my company and with my peers. Should I resolve this conflict with power or with love? I feel they humiliate me after a mental problem. Actually, I'm very sad because I think we had to support each other in this quarantine situation instead of endanger each other's job security and cause hard times for each other. How can I process my feeling that I feel humiliated I can feel I had to release them with love that could bring me peace. Of course, I'm angry at the same time. I'm looking for how I could proceed with my feelings. Thank you. Well, Monica, I can tell you that if you want to impose any kind of feeling upon yourself, you will lose. 
Because when you are captured by your own feelings and your energy level goes beneath a certain level, you get panicked. Panic comes when your reserves are running low. It's your meter going into the red. You have to fill it up. So at this point, none of the tactics that you suggest in your question would work. What would work is that you recharge the batteries. You get to a higher energy state and to a greater clarity of mind, and that would help. All right? Do not look for a specific emotional pattern. See your true situation. Even that is difficult right now. Imagine that you're the captain of a boat in a bay near the shore where there's a lot of rocks just underneath the surface of the sea. If it's low tide and you start sailing, you hit the rocks because you don't see them. The water is not high enough. And if you hit the rocks, you lose the boat, you lose the crew, you lose yourself. If you're smart, you wait until high tide. Sometimes high tide reaches one, two, three meters higher level. Then you can sail over the rocks. It's the same as the energy level of the mind. If you're low on energy, you panic because you are lost between the feelings that you create. Also between the thoughts that you create. We call that the entropy of the mind. When you disperse and you lose yourself. Don't do that. Don't follow that. Don't attach to any kind of feelings or karma. Put that completely down. Return to your Tantian and practice. Make a schedule for yourself. Ask for instructions if necessary. Without practice, you won't reach a good solution. Without the high tide, the captain cannot sail, no matter how well they use the steer on the boat. Okay? Vinetta, I feel a lot of emotions, fear, aggression, anger, upset, lost hope. I always return to the breath and I feel these emotions, but I recognize that I'd like to ignore them. After a long time meditation practice, I realized I have pressed down all the emotions, how to process them correctly, how to be aware of them, let them be, but not ignore them by jumping in meditation. Well, Vinetta, it's not uncommon what you write. In fact, many times in the West, when we start meditating, we believe we have to be perfect right away and become Buddha right now. In fact, that's what we learned from some schools, that you can become Buddha right now. Well, I don't judge this statement, but all of us who've been practicing for more than a few years, we understand this. We can all become Buddha right now, potentially, but all this is good for seeing the karma that's in our backpack. Now you see your own emotions in your own backpack. Wonderful. So do not use the technique to suppress them. If your intellect is too strong, you use your practice, whether it's the question or just watching the breath or even using a mantra to appear before yourself as a clear and wonderful practitioner. It's not going to work. If you compress karma, it will explode. It's like gunpowder, okay? That's why in the old days, with the cannons and guns, they had this strong compacting move, and then they put the cannonball in, and boom! Then the cannon fired. If they don't compress the gunpowder, then it's not going to explode. Vice versa. If you don't compress your karma, it will not hit back because it doesn't get critical mass in your subconscious. But if you use your practice to suppress your karma, one day it explodes. Why? Because you suppressed it. So use your practice, your clear question, and your mantra to stay at this moment so that the body and the mind would not become separate and your emotions and your thoughts wouldn't take you far, far away into either heaven or hell. But let your karma appear and disappear. Do not want to be perfect. Do not want to reach enlightenment right away. Become clear moment to moment. Then you can reflect your karma very clearly. And if you let it happen, if you let it come and go, after a while, it runs out of steam. It runs out of energy. Why? You should understand how you fuel your karma. If you give energy to your karma and information, it exists. If you remove energy and information, your karma begins to disappear. 
Energy is willpower. Either you want it or you don't want it. Information is that you judge it. Either you think it's good or it's bad. It's you or it's not you. So stop the reactive mind. Then the energy and information begins to dissipate from the karma and it goes away without a trace. Why? Because you manage to unmake it. If you make it, you have it. If you don't make it, you don't have it. All your karma is impermanent, interdependent and imperfect. If you're not attached to your karma, these three laws work for you. If you are attached to your karma and identify with your karma, these three laws work against you. Remember that. Okay? And then if you practice like this, soon your karma will become more easy, more flexible. It starts to be more fluid. Okay? Then what appears will also disappear. You don't touch it. You don't make it grow. Yutka. What is the mantra to defend or protect myself from a family member who always wants to defeat me and everybody else verbally? I'm not the enemy, nor are the others. Thank you. Well, Yudka, when you have the situation, then per first make sure that you have some private time when you can practice Kwan Se Um Bo Sal mantra. Compassion and compassionate mantra is the key to, to melt this kind of person. And when it happens, then don't react. Be present without any reaction. Intelligently perceive the impulse from the person who wants to defeat you or everybody else. But remember, all this is a consequence of some previous karma. Remove the cause, then the effect will disappear. Don't even try to dominate back. Instead, solve the situation. Focus on the object, on the situation, and don't worry about the subject, the person who, who tries to dominate you in that situation. Why? Because your action power will become greater. You will be able to act more accurately and more correctly than the person who wants to dominate you. Because that person is not really in the situation. Instead, he or she focuses on the wrong side of the relationship. You will have more energy, more focus and better output. In this way, you can totally disable the attempt of domination. From Hanan to everyone, I was wondering how Zen views out-of-body experiences. Zen doesn't view out-of-body experiences in any different way than in-body experiences. Most important is if you're out of the body and you are still alive, come back. Come back. Be in the body. If you're too much outside of the body, then you keep dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. And if you have too much energy outside of the body, the cord will be cut and you die. Please don't die. Please be alive and finish the incarnation at its natural end. Come back to us, okay? Everybody loves you, so come back. Same questioner, I was asking because I had it for a long time and then it stopped. How do I return to OBE, out of body experience? Please don't return to this experience because being attached to the experience means you disable yourself. You are not in the body so you cannot live. Also, since you are not dead, you are not permanently outside of the body and you cannot even die. So please be alive because you were born and you haven't finished yet. Do it. Do your life. It takes the greatest courage. Ovidio, as an epileptic, I had a few seizures last year during meditation, which left me physically, but also emotionally scarred. Now, after finding, testing the right medication, I am in a struggle right now that I feel fear for meditation. Any idea about it? How can I overcome this fear? Look, Ovidio, if you are epileptic, then you should consult your therapist or doctor. Meditation itself disables intentionally the self-defense capabilities so that all your karma can appear and also it could disappear. But if you have epilepsy, this can be really dangerous. So please consult your doctor and in line with this consultation, you can work something out that is not dangerous for you. Hanan. In Zen, we talk about how everything is complete to accept our situation and that everything is created by the mind. 
because of these ideas, many can create the position of not taking action in a situation that bothers me and just accepting it as it is. How do I know when I should take action to change the situation to the way I think it should be? And when do I just accept things as they are? Hanan, your mind is so wonderful because it's so supremely clever, but it's in an abstraction. And I will answer you very concretely. Look at the situation itself. None of the situations that we experience are actually static. They are not permanent. They are going somewhere. The situation develops or deteriorates. Now, see which. See where it goes. And if it's necessary, adjust the situation because the direction is wrong. Some suffering will appear out of it. And most important, you see that it's your job. You don't just think it's your job. You see it's your job to enter the situation, try to improve it, try to help, etc. If the situation is not your job, don't touch it. If the situation is happy and happily developing, become part of it. The first, when you see that it's your job to help, it's object just like this. When the situation is happily developing and going to the right direction and you can become one with it without any problems, that's subject just like this. That's why I'm making this distinction for Zen students. Remember the four kinds of like this. The fourth is just like this. So when you're happy, everyone can be happy. When everyone's happy, you can be happy. Subject just like this. When the situation needs help, people are sad, people are suffering, people are in need, then you put yourself to an object just like this relationship. You help those that are in need, give food to the hungry, give drink to the thirsty. Okay? Connie, I don't know what to do with the anger I feel for what's going on. I can't stop judging all the people in charge. I don't think anyone knows what they're doing. Connie, as much as I sympathize with you, I would like you to see where anger comes from and where it goes. Anger is destructive. Do you want to destroy yourself or your environment? Look at it again from another angle. Someone else is angry. Would you like to listen to anybody's anger? Would you like any part of it? So that's why it's important to keep a balanced and clear mind and let go of your angry reaction. You know who is in charge? You are. You are in charge, and first of all, of your own emotions. You should be. If you're not in charge of your own emotions, how could you help anyone? How could you communicate efficiently with anyone? That is an important question. Long time ago, somewhere, there was a Dauphin, who was acceding to the throne after his father deceased. And I think the story took place in Asia. The monk in charge was asked to teach this young Dauphin how to use the throne once he accedes to it. This monk said to the young princeling, Sir, one day you will be controlling this whole country. After your father passes away, you will be the king. You will control this huge land. Now, I'm asking you to do something before that happens. Please look in front of yourself, see these few square meters, and try to control that. Keep your attention there. If you keep your attention before yourself, 100%, there's a fair chance you'll be able to keep your attention, your royal gaze, your eyes of majesty on your own country. This happened for a few days. Then the young prince went to his father and says, Dad, I don't think I can follow you on the throne. Why? You're good. You're getting educated. I'm hearing from the monk that you're listening very carefully. Dad, something's really wrong. The monk asked me to keep my attention before myself on these few square feet or square meters. And I cannot do that. If I cannot keep my attention here, on this small space, in my own room, how could I pay attention to this whole country when I become king? So 
don't worry about those who are in charge it's their karma and i know that these rules touch all of us not just you all of us so don't get locked up in your own reaction you are in charge you are never forget that what do you offer to older people who deal with loneliness and the desire to see them and when it comes to them they suffer it's never too late to practice Loneliness can happen in so many ways. One is physical loneliness. There's nobody around. And the second is I'm surrounded by people, but I can't open up. I wouldn't open up. I stay alone. Although people talk to me, want to connect to me. You should be the bridge. Help those people open up. Be totally receptive and compassionate. Compassion goes through everything. It melts all hindrances. And if you can be totally open, that inspires others to be open, other people included. ST, I do not usually remember my dreams. During this period, I began to remember. What can I do with it during meditation? ST, many times our dreams are like the cleansing process of the mind. You do not have to consciously remember them. But if they come up during meditation, then ask the question, where does this come from? and just perceive and then you go one layer deeper and you will see why your subconscious sent you that message why you had that dream don't intellectualize don't think about it don't rationalize do not try to make a system or a theory to dissect and understand and analyze don't do that just perceive with one question where does this come from keep your mind simple Keep your mind clear. And if you can do that, the dream reveals its origin. And once you see the origin, the dream disappears. Then you're complete. Reverse. If you keep having the same dream or dreams all the time, then you have not revealed the source. You haven't attained the source yet. Mikhail, how can we help in addition to our personal practice and how our practice helps others? Mikhail, you have three children you have attained that so many times how to help people i'm pretty sure that you know this so if you ask this question for someone else then ask it that way but i know you very well and you help a lot in addition to your personal practice and you know that very well how to do it so keep doing it this situation for you not so special you learned how to take care of your family very early Please keep up the good work. For Karen, to create a relationship needs mental adjustment and physical attraction and not always have both. I do not want to compromise. How can I overcome this karma that will come to me? Do we have these two things in common? Physical attraction is like a good booster. We feel attracted, lots of energy appears. And then the mind is ready to compromise in a lot of ways that without the attraction, it wouldn't happen. That's why I say beauty comes in a package. And most of the time, we do not see the rest of the content. We see the beauty only. Then attraction becomes commitment. And over time, we see what else is in the package. But we don't want to lose the primary attraction and the beauty. And we don't want to give up the commitment, etc. Unless conditions become really bad. So see physical attraction for what it is. It's temporary. See mental attraction. Well, you can work on that and maintain that. And I wish that the second would be just as important as the first. Most people are working on their physique, on their bodies, and on their faces, how they look. Yeah, well enough, fair enough. We don't want to look ugly. But whatever you do, physical attraction is very temporary compared to the, to the mind's need for intimacy, connection, security, committed and long-standing relationship, all right? So after a while, the mental attraction will precede the physical. We all have to live with someone, whether it's a family or a sangha or just a partner or a dog, or a cat. How do we do that? If our minds are not beautiful, you can have a fantastically beautiful body, but you become unbearable for the other person, and eventually you will become a beautiful and lonely person. 
There are some people whose bodies are not looking so great, but their hearts are shining. Their hearts have wisdom, compassion, all these good human qualities. And that's attractive. And in the long run, this attraction will be more enduring than just the physical. Michela, hi. I want to know if a sustained meditation and mindfulness in life can heal a bipolar disorder which doesn't respond to any treatment. Michaela, primarily meditation was not meant for these kinds of treatments. So you have to consult a specialist. And if the specialist recommends meditation next to the treatment that you need professionally, then you can do that. But please understand, in the Buddha's time or subsequently in India, Tibet, China, Korea, Japan, this was not the issue. The issue was healthy people waking up from their own healthy illusions and get awakening beyond the everyday mind. Odell, do we have to accept everything from the government? How can we protest in this time? We cannot go to the streets. Odell, protest inside and then you can have connections outside. Of course you cannot go to the streets. But imagine that you're not alone with your unhappiness with the government, so try to connect to those people who feel the same way. But be careful. Some people are professionally unhappy with the government, and at the same time they have a mission. They are agents provocateurs. Don't fall for that. From Sigalia, how will I stop eating? I was fired from work last week after six years. I understand the connection. You will not stop eating. Maybe for a few days you can fast. But after that you have to start eating again. You were fired from work last week. On what grounds? You should see that. Was it legal? Was it illegal? Do you want to fight? Do you want to accept it? Are you alone in this situation? Or others were fired in the same way? Most important, family. You have family. The family should help you. And then when it's your turn to help them back, you will. I remember from Korea, we had many kinds of supporters in Korean Shindo or Shindonim. Some of them were young urban professionals. And three sisters lived together in one small apartment near the temple, a few bus stops away. The eldest sister was a photographer. Later on, she turned into a textile artist. The second was a secretary, and the third, the youngest, was aspiring to become a painter. They lived together, no other people, parents or other siblings in the house, no partners of course, and one of them was making money, the other two helped with everything around the house. And I asked, how does this work? I mean, we are from the West anyway, where this is uh, not easily accepted. The eldest sister, the photographer who was making bread for the family, she was the breadwinner, she said, it's no problem. I can do this for years. When it's my time to study or have a child, my sisters will help me back. Strive for that. Find these relationships that are trust-based and not interest-based you can get some help that you will return later. Hello Sunim, how can I keep my attention or mind constantly awake or clear during the day? Thank you. Well, what do you see now? What do you hear now? What are you doing right now? Moment to moment, see clearly, hear clearly, perceive your body and mind. If you have this clarity, then inside, outside, all become one. And this attention, as one point, should be in your Tantian, but it should also be around at the same time in space, reflecting everything and everyone in this space. That's good practice. Hi, Vera. Your question, how do you understand this quarantine? What do you think Corona came to teach us besides sending the whole world into retreat? Vera. Corona also has the nature of emptiness. It didn't just knock at our door to teach us. We can use it as teaching. Very important. Some people use it as uh, some nuisance. Some people have these theories about it. Some people have wishful thinking about it. 
Like I said during the previous talk, we created it by abusing wildlife. So it's Mother Nature's response back to us. For a fact, that's cause and effect. Beyond that, it's our job what we make of it, how we use this situation. There is no special teaching besides what you attain. And I know you, you have keen eyes, you have a sharp mind. Use this to attain better qualities inside and outside. And then Corona helped us. If we become depressed, angry, irritated, then you used Corona to destroy your own mental integrity. Totally empty situation. What do we use it for? How do we use the situation? That determines it. Unidentifiable writer, I gained weight, three kilograms. So please, if you gained weight, three kilograms, go up to the questioner who has nothing to eat and give that person food. Then you will eat less, okay? Neta, how can I help my teenager daughters to stop fighting now? Gymnastics, you have to give them a lot of exercise. They have to tire themselves with push-ups and other cardio and you should dub it as your physique, your body will look very good. So tire them off completely. Because teenagers, they have a lot of energy. They should have, they can go out, so they fight. So they have to practice good gymnastics, a lot of sports, then it helps. Timel, hi Suni, which mantra do you suggest to reach a peaceful mind or protection nowadays? Timel, if you go to our homepage, you can download the great Compassion Dharani in Sanskrit, Nilakanta Dharani. And there is the last three lines, which goes like this. You repeat this. Literally, it means taking refuge in the three precious ones, we become the mind of Kwan Bosal. The three precious ones are the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. All right? And you can listen to the whole mantra, which is about four minutes. If you care for it, then I suggest you repeat the whole mantra about nine times a day. And it really gives you compassion, protection, which is actually the protection of the mind against its own harmful influence. Also, you do not take others' unnecessary reactions seriously. You do not take them to your heart because you don't have to. You have nothing to do with other people's dualistic reactions. You have a job with the person, with the soul, not the angry karma or the greedy karma or all these unnecessary things. If you want just these last three lines that I just recited, do that for half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening, and see how it changes you. What happens is that for the first couple of days, you may notice some things in the surface, but not what you wish for. So give yourself enough time. There's time. Everybody's locked up. There is time. So practice, and practice the great Dharani more and more. What happens is it goes to your subconscious, cleans out a lot of your subconscious unseen karma, and when that happens, you naturally become more peaceful. You do not have to force yourself. How can you keep your fist locked like this? How long? Complete squeeze. Minutes. Maybe quarter of an hour. But after a while, your grip weakens because your hand gets tired. Same as our heart. You can hang on to emotions. You can identify with positive, wonderful emotions. But if it's forced, if it's not natural, if it doesn't come from your one mind, from your true nature, then you will get tired. And then it flips. You lose energy and you become angry. That's not true compassion. It's an emotional posture. And this emotional posture leaves you, betrays you in the worst possible moments. So compassion mantra, be patient, do it, and then it does the job in your subconscious and then it comes to the surface when necessary. Next, my friend with cancer is seeking some advice. It's a brain tumor. Any tips on what to say, you add? The basic relationship to anybody sick is, how may I help you? But in this case, with brain tumor, you need professional help. So you should be the compassion engine, and the wisdom engine is the doctor, all right? Moshe, if the corona is the result of how we reacted to nature, 
is there karma in common with all humanity even though there are those who preserve nature and did not create the cause of karma yes Moshe it's group karma there are 60 people in the room two people are fighting one is screaming everybody sees the fight and everybody goes deaf after a while group karma if you are in a group you should see what kind of group karma others create in the same group and be careful you should know what place you should take within the group and then your karma can help the group and don't follow those people whose karma is to the detriment of the group who are doing harm Flavius how should we pursue the Buddhist way and teachings from home can you recommend a specific path yes we call that home schedule a retreat which happens every day because you are home anyway make a schedule for yourself and follow the tradition that you know this is not the time to go to any group gatherings because there are none there shouldn't be so you don't get direct instructions use what you have and use the home situation with a strict schedule so that you would have some effort not just relax too much relax not good too tense also not good the schedule will help you and use this situation to wake up to attain some kind of awakening you can do that at home as well Michal your son is asking what is the best hour in a day to practice Michal the best hour to practice is right after waking up normally in this temple we start chanting at 5 a.m. in Korea in some places 4 30 some other 4 we do this at 5 because most people can do it for an extended period of time now if your son wakes up at 5 then mazal tov and congratulations good boy but don't make him wake up so early because he would he won't like it after awakening do the bathroom job and then practice practice for one hour and then the rest of the day can come and if you can do that it's fantastic we call that Dharma family Dharma family practicing together miles since my practice has become stronger my emotions have become less extreme both good and bad however to those especially who know me well friends and family they view this as me caring or loving them less my don't worry about people what they think about you you know how to manifest these emotions and manifest them when necessary and don't manifest them when it's not necessary this allows for you to change and walk on the path of this great middle way and you don't depend on people's opinions on you but inside your relationship to them must be very very clear and I know it is if you keep that relationship to them very clear then they feel it and when necessary they hear it or they also experience it through your own action Michela despite the fact that meditation does something great for me and I'm feeling extraordinary sometimes I really can't do it why is this happening is it my fault or is it normal for everyone sometimes thank you Michela the more you react to meditation the less you will be able to do it because when you feel great ah, it's great hmm, maybe next time it's not so necessary because I already feel great not so good or you get down to business again and then meditation doesn't help me your energy goes less and less and less so you have not so good opinion on meditation it also becomes a hindrance so don't make anything on top of meditation don't have any opinion on that just do it and when you just do it then it's helpful then you have no problem repeating it Ran assuming these times you have more free time than usual what do you relish in doing Ran I have to disappoint you I don't have more free time it's an illusion really the temple is busy the Sangha is good we have nine residents as usual we are busy taking care of the temple uh, cleaning things up now it's really a good time to go into uh, the depth of our storage both outside and inside and put things in good functioning order that's what we are doing we are busy happily busy okay is guided meditation okay yes 
for beginners if you like you can do guided meditation when someone tells you what to think what to feel what to do but after a while you have to lose the training wheels you have to use your own bike in your own way in the long run guided meditation does not support your own spiritual autonomy or to attain your own buddha nature at the beginning it's okay if you want but after a while do not have external guidance internalize the practice and use your own clarity to get rid of your karma hava hi suni my daughter is in hospital expecting the birth of her first child how can i support myself and my daughter remotely while she's suffering and i'm far from her hava first of all congratulations i wish for a safe and healthy childbirth but is she really suffering she's expecting a child you gave birth to at least one so it's pain but it's not suffering so she can be in pain labor is painful fantastic as it happens but it's painful but your mantra chanting for her is supporting her that's all you should do and don't worry about her because then the connection is broken then the worry becomes just some kind of noise 100% focus Kwan Sam Bo Sal or the Great Dharani on her in your mind and chant, 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 chant. Then the baby just pops out, no problem. So ladies and gentlemen, it's been wonderful to see you all. And I'm happy that you asked so many good questions. So use this situation to become more alert and awake, to have more compassion and more wisdom, to help more people than before. And I sincerely wish that in two weeks we would meet here again, maybe out of quarantine if it's possible, then it will be the last online talk for this time. If this quarantine situation continues, we continue too. We don't give up. We stay together online. We practice together as much as possible at the same time, although not in the same space. I appreciate your effort. I wish you guys very, very good health and the best of luck for this. And you know, luck doesn't exist. Good karma exists. So produce good karma and share that with others. So thank you very much. Take care and see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.